Hi kitty cats, I am Amethysta and welcome to, I guess a behind the scenes uh, look at, at what's going on in my head and what I've been thinking about uh, the past couple of weeks um, and how that's going to end up contributing to the work I do in the next also couple of weeks. Uh, this video is made possible by uh, my Substack, Substack supporters. Uh, so if you enjoy this video, maybe consider going to Substack, looking for Amethyst at Dings, and uh, subscribing so I can continue to make videos just like this. More information in the show notes. So, I'm working off of notes. It's very exciting, and I even wrote them. So what has concerned me the past couple of weeks has been um, everything that we're seeing uh, in the media about transgender people. And mainly what's concerning me is, you know, policy development. Everything ends up turning into policy development. How do we make the world safe for cisgender people as well as transgender people? Now that policy development is founded on the, the idea that sex and gender are identical. That is that a sex implies a gender and a gender implies a sex. When you have that sort of an equation, what that does is affect choices in healthcare. You know, for instance, now we're seeing uh, transgender, uh, young transgender people um, not being able to get health care, you know, as a result of certain laws that are being passed. Um, there's also, you know, if I'm, if I'm uh, as an older transgender woman, you know, there's also the concern of should, should any of my care be covered or is everything... Uh, has is every all the care that I need is that elective because I've chosen to to go down a path of hormones that would not normally be um, associated with my sex. The other aspect of policy development is just basic human rights. I mean, should a transgender person be able to walk down the street and not be harassed? Should a transgender person be able to use a restroom that's commensurate with his or her? Um, uh, gender preference, you know, it's just, it's things that, um, it's an everyday kind of life sort of thing. And again, these are based on, on an equation of sex and gender. Okay, so as they say, let's talk about sex. Yesterday, so February 19th, I published an article uh, called How Fuzzy is Sex? And that article, um, first of all, has to do with sex, not a surprise, but in particular has to do with a biological definition. We think of sex these days as necessarily um, presenting as primary characteristics, genitalia um, and secondary characteristics like body hair or, or breasts. That's how we see sex right now, how society wants to define sex. The thing is, there is a strict biological definition of sex. And it's important for us to think about this because in the strict biological definition, all of a sudden a lot of distinction goes away in terms of behavior because it's not based on behavior. Instead, sex is important in particular to one single act of reproduction. That's right, it only makes a difference when you're going to reproduce and only for that particular act. So a good question to ask then, well, what do we do when we're not reproducing? I don't know about you, but my entire life now, much of it has not been about reproduction. Much of it has been trying to, you know, engage in the act that might lead to reproduction. But for the most part, you know, my first 18 years, not a lot of reproducing going on there. You know, my last, mm, 15 years, not a lot of reproducing going on there. So that's a whole lot of our lives. What are we talking about for the remainder of that? Why is that, uh, why do we sort of, you know, brush that aside if sex is only important during a single act of reproduction? All right, so what we are doing is we are expressing the sex that we have, the biological sex that we have within the context of a society and the context of an environment. There is a word for that. The expression of biological sex within a society and within an environment is called gender. So 
between acts of reproduction, the way that you get into an act of reproduction is by expression of your gender. Uh, because you know, there are some there are some species that will will act as male uh, during an act of reproduction, but then they'll act as female through an, in another act of reproduction. So they are gendered, both male and female, in acts of reproduction. And so that is an important point to take into account, is that gender is not sex, it is our expression of sex within context. Okay, so the next thought that's been floating around in my head has to do with evolution. And I recognize that may sound somewhat like a non sequitur, but um, just as there is a misrepresentation of the relationship between sex and gender, so there is a misrepresentation in what evolution means, really, truly, strictly means. We are taught, and maybe we don't even get this in a biology class, we just get this from the media, from movies, whatever, we are taught that evolution only has to do with genetics. That in your chromosomes, in your genes somewhere, everything about you has been passed down. Whether that's your eye color, whether that's your behavior, whether those are some of the thoughts that you think. And this is not at all true. As a theory, evolution is concerned with one thing, and that's reproduction. In fact, it really just has to do with how efficiently one organism can reproduce. That is, traits are only going to get passed down if there is an organism capable of reproducing to pass them down. So, the next thoughts, the, the next thoughts that I have, and I have not actually written this, um, this is probably a job for tomorrow, but the um, evolution in general, you know, we need to be concerned with, well, what helps one organism reproduce? That's important, because that's where we start to, to, to think about genetics, just the, the reproduction of one single organism. But a larger topic around that is how did that organism become capable of reproducing? Somehow that, that organism reached maturity, reached sexual maturity, and somehow that organism was able to find somebody with whom to have some kind of sex in order to reproduce. So, what makes a species or a culture capable of reproducing, capable of perpetuating itself? And this is, this is truly what evolution is founded on, is, is an entire species being capable of getting to a point where they can reproduce. From a cultural standpoint, so, that, so from the species standpoint, that ends up being biology, sure, genetics. From a cultural standpoint, why is it that some cultures have come and gone? Why did they not perpetuate? Certainly it seems the human race did, but some cultural traits have not continued. Why is that? And do those, is that a form of evolution? I say yes. So evolution is important. That's the next, that's the next step of, of what it is I have to talk about. Okay, so the last thought flittering around through my little head uh, is the intersection between sex and evolution. So as I mentioned before, sex is, is concerned with a, a single act of reproduction, or it is important only during one act of reproduction. But there's a lot that we do during life that isn't reproducing. And what we're doing then is expressing our sex, our sex characteristics, within the context of a society or an environment. And that is the definition of gender. I also mentioned evolution. And evolution, as a theory, is concerned only with reproduction, in particular, how efficiently a species is capable of reproducing. But there needs to be some way for members of the species to get into an act of reproduction. So the overlap between sex and between evolution is gender. There needs to be some way for a sexual characteristic to be expressed within the, the society of whatever species it is, so that a single organism has an improved efficiency of growing up, reaching sexual maturity, finding a mate, doing the deed, and perpetuating the species. 
And so that is the intersection between sex and evolution. It is gender. And this is why gender is so critical to our discussions today. It's not sex, but if we want our, our species to reproduce, it's gender. We have to be concerned with gender. And the, this is, uh, you know, what I've been talking about or thinking about and intend to talk about in the next, you know, over the next week. So hopefully that sounds interesting. If it does, like I mentioned, feel free to like this video, or please do. Uh, if this sounds at all interesting to you, again, I urge you to, um, to subscribe to my Substack uh, at AmethystaDings. It's in the show notes. That's about it. So let me leave you with another piece of wisdom like I like to do. And that goes like this. Always be yourself. Unless you're capable of being a dinosaur, in which case, go be a dinosaur instead. Bye.